There's one thing I know about all of you that are watching right now. You're extremely busy. You have hundreds of emails you're going through. You're responding to calls and constant interruptions. So we thought we'd try something just a little bit different to try to get you information about the association in a way that's quick and get you the really important stuff so you don't have to go through all the emails we send on a regular basis to find out what's really important. So we're trying this video blog with the help of our good friends at Blue Bulletin. So I wanna thank Kelsey and Ann and their team for being here today and for their help to make this happen today. Let's begin with our upcoming Fall Leadership Conference. Um, I know all of you have limited budgets for training. You've got a lot going on, but I wanna encourage you to make this career development opportunity a priority for you and for the members of your team. It's a great opportunity to get out of the office, get a chance to continue to build those critical leadership relationships, and to navigate the kind of issues that every department faces. So this year we have an excellent group of presenters, and I'd like to just mention a few of them right now. The first is Chief Robert White. He was the police chief in Flagstaff, Arizona. He's retired now, but he's gonna be doing the Emotional Survival Program that you probably more commonly associate it with Kevin Gilmartin. He has an excellent program and he's an excellent speaker and you won't wanna miss that. Another presenter that I'm excited to have this year and somebody that's probably not familiar to many of you is Wayne Cadero. Uh, Wayne Cadero is the author of several books including Attitudes That Attract and Leading on Empty. He spoke to the Global Leadership Conference, a conference that's held in Illinois, it's simulcast to over 160,000 leaders around the world. He's a great presenter. And you're not gonna wanna miss what he has to say about leading on empty. You can tell there's a little bit of a theme here, right? It's survival in a career that can be very taxing and very demanding. So you wanna, wanna miss the opportunity to hear from these folks and also kind of reflect for yourself, for the people you lead, for your officers. How do you help them to survive a career well? Now we have some great sponsors at the upcoming conference. We have Power DMS, and you're gonna see Brad Enlow there again. And then I also wanna give a shout out to American Military University. As you know, they're one of our strategic sponsors, and Deb Setzer will be there to join us again. They have a brand new accelerated bachelor's program and a new doctorate program that I know that she's gonna be excited to tell all of you about. So if you haven't registered yet for the conference, make sure to do so. Just click on the link and we'll look forward to seeing you and your team there. Next, let's talk about the upcoming IACP conference in Philadelphia. If you haven't registered yet for this excellent conference, it's not too late. Uh, to do so, just visit the IACP conference Org. Now, you also are going to have to find lodging for the conference, and if you haven't found the lodging yet, contact Marie in our office. We have a special Oregon room block, and we'll be able to get uh, arrangements made for you so you'll have a place to stay when you arrive there. Now, another exciting thing I want to mention about this year is, as you know, if you've been to the conference before, we usually have an Oregon night dinner where we try to bring everybody from Oregon who's attending the conference together for one special dinner. It's a great time. Now in the past, all of you have had to pay for your own meals. This year, however, Leeds Online has graciously sponsored our dinner. So the dinner's gonna be held at a restaurant called Harp and Crown Restaurant. It's gonna be on Saturday evening, the 21st of October. We'll get you additional details but we'd love to have you join us. And this year, it won't cost a dollar out of your pocket. So that's a pretty good deal. As you know, we just concluded a grueling legislative session that started in February and ended just a little after July. Every legislative session, there are hundreds of bills introduced that impact the work that you do in your law enforcement agencies. And my job's always to make sure that the legislature doesn't pass laws that are difficult for you to implement or that are contrary to best practice. To do that though, 
we often need to take some self-leadership. The way we've done that over the last several years is we've identified high profile critical issues. And before the legislature has told us how we're going to do our work, we put together strategic work groups who have been designed to bring a product, a product back to agencies to implement the combined kind of best practice policy uh, with the kind of strategic considerations that different agencies of different sizes have to take into consideration. We don't want the legislature creating a one size fits all solution. And so we have to do some work to avoid that. I wanna update you on four work groups, a couple of them that are just about to complete their work and a couple of them that are just beginning. Let's begin with the Officer Involved Domestic Violence Work Group. As you know, every session for the last three sessions, we've had a bill introduced that is very prescriptive about what agencies must do in order to prevent and deal with officer-involved domestic violence. In order to avoid the legislation, we created that work group to deal specifically with this issue. They worked for months and they created a best practice policy framework that has already been distributed to your agencies. But there was another thing we promised in coordination with that policy framework, and that was an actual video training that you could use in your own departments. And so that has just about done, and in fact, we plan to preview it at the upcoming Fall Leadership Conference in September. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Sheriff Craig Roberts, his team, and a group of chiefs and sheriffs from around the state did excellent work through that work group to create some excellent product. And now this video series is gonna be one additional positive that I think will help us avoid legislation in the future. The second work group, which is also completing its work, deals with the issue of mental health crisis, crisis response, and what best practice agencies need to be aware of in order to navigate the real tricky environment of mental illness as it presents in our world and as law enforcement officers come into contact with people who are struggling with mental illness. They've completed their meetings and their work, and they're in the process now of drafting that best practice policy framework. I wanna remind you that when I say policy framework, what I'm talking about is something that reflects current best practice, but that also creates really needed flexibility. You may be in a very small town you may be in a very large city and you have different resources depending on where you are, where you live, what your community needs are, and a policy framework helps you make decisions about adapting a policy that reflects best practice but still fits you and your agency. I want to tell you about two new work groups that are just beginning right now so you'll get a feel for what kind of things are going on. Both of these are the result of the recent legislative session. The first one is the House Bill 2355 Implementation Work Group. It's designed to help the Oregon State Police implement the requirement that all of us have in Oregon, all agencies, to begin collecting stop data uh, for the purposes of evaluating racial profiling impacts. Uh, that will be occurring over the next several months. We have representation from members around the state in small and large agencies. As you probably know, it's the large agencies that have to implement first, but the program that's developed for data collection is really important to all of you. The key is this, it has to be a program that works for you, your departments and your officers, regardless of what kind of CAD system you have, whether you're doing electronic citations or paper citations. And so the purpose of this implementation work group is to make sure that the impact on local agencies is minimal. That is beginning now, and Oregon State Police is doing an excellent job of beginning the process of developing a system and program that you can use in your local agency. The next work group I'd like to let you know about is also a response to the most recently held legislative session. It comes out of a bill that was introduced by Representative Janelle Bynum, House Bill 3266. The bill actually created restrictions on what officers could do in school settings with juveniles with regard to restraints. Now we were able to kill the bill, but it's gonna come back. And so we've chosen to create a juvenile issues work group. 
And the purpose of the work group is to look at best practice around the issue of restraints. But frankly, I believe juvenile issues are gonna be a bigger and a bigger issue in the legislative setting moving forward. We have to have a commitment to looking closely at policies across the range of issues with juveniles. And so we're just now beginning the process of putting that work group together. If you have a passion for juveniles, if you have experience in working with juveniles, if you have expertise in this area of law enforcement, we wanna encourage you to get involved. We're trying again to identify participants, not just from the Valley, not just from parts of the state. We wanna have good representation, different sized agencies, different geographic locations. Your expertise may be key to ensuring that this work group is successful in the end. So this will begin launching very soon. We'll send you more information on it, but if you have an interest, I'd encourage you to get involved. It's really an important work group. And it's work groups like this that help me do my job in the legislature to avoid legislation that tells you how to do your work when it may not be um, workable and may not fit your community. I wanna thank all of you for taking time to watch this first video blog effort. It's kind of a new experiment, and so we're really interested in your feedback. If you could let us know what you liked, what you'd like to see in the future, anything we can improve on, just send us an email, visit our Facebook page, but please take time to let us know. It's always good to get that feedback. Now to conclude, let me just say that it really is always a great privilege for me to represent the law enforcement leaders in Oregon. It's not trite to say things are different here. They really are. Um, I've had the experience of leaders in Oregon exhibiting some really important traits that just aren't present anywhere else. The first is you are committed to integrity. Everything you do demands that, and that's what gives the public confidence in what we do. And it makes my job when I represent you in the legislature far easier. Second, we get along in Oregon. In some states, there's conflicts between different kinds of agencies in Oregon. It doesn't matter if you're in a city, a county, at the state level, you work together and you're unified. That's an incredible benefit here in Oregon. Third, um, you are committed to problem solving and not complaining. There's a lot to complain about in law enforcement. The job's really hard. And the problems that you face on the street, whether it's mental illness or drug addiction, are not created by you, but you are committed to solving the problem as best you can. The public should have great confidence what you do. I certainly have confidence in what you do. And I hope that uh, you'll continue to give me the privilege of representing you. It is a great privilege. Thank you.